Hello, gentles and ladymen. I'm Bison Gaming. I am joined by my brother Chase MD on YouTube. How's it going? Like and subscribe. Yes, absolutely. And today... my goal, my goal is to keep uh, more subscribers than Bison Storytime for as long as possible. <laughs> I'm actually gonna have a, a little short video going up on uh, on uh, on there tomorrow, but uh, that'll, that'll be pretty funny. Anyways, today we bring you a four v four. This was mostly an in-house game, actually. Um, this is of the eight people in this game. Six of us were in the same chat room, uh, with everybody on my team being in the same chat room, and then Pharaoh King, who is. Probably the best individual player in here on the opponent's team, along with Kaiser, who are both listening in on the conversations that were taking place with, with the two. And then I, I am assuming conveying them to the two randoms. I don't really play much 4v4, um, but I had decided from the get-go that I was planning on doing some outlaw strats, and that is what we're doing today. Um, because, you know, USA outlaws are some of the best endgame units uh, that they have access to and we're going to be showing them off today so we're doing a market starts we chopped 50 wood for our hunting dogs and we're getting capitalism in order to uh, get the rest of that coin the classic italy start <laughs> yeah minus minus you know the other upgrades but uh, our build order is going to be going into Dutch Immigrants, which does utilize the new 50 coin buff that USA has gotten. Because uh, Dutch Immigrants used to cost 350 coin, now it costs 300. Didn't and then, it used to cost 400 too? I think it was always 350. Mm, okay. Uh, I, was, I was laughing about the possibility of making this build use all three buffs by having um, Dutch Immigrants, Oklahoma Black Mesa, and French Immigrants all in one build order, but... It just doesn't fit because I like having the infinite coin income. No, it's not really relevant on this map because there are nothing but gold mines everywhere, but you know, still. <laughs> Alright, let's let's take a look at everybody uh, what everybody else is doing, shall we? Let's do it. Alright, so Prez Material is our local Portugal player. He's going water. He's going hardcore on the water. And Classic port. Yeah, and this is like the water map. You start with a wood chopping gathering oh treasure. Oh my god, look how many fish are in the ocean on a 4v4. Yeah, well, I mean, Finland is always an insane water map to begin with, but yeah. Yes, but goddamn. Yeah. I'm telling you, by the end of this game, he had almost as much gold as I did, and that's saying something. Uh. Iwo Iwo is our house of player. Uh, I'm not sure what he's red. He's red. Uh, I'm not really sure what he was doing, but he always had an army. I think he had lots of shock riders. Yeah, he's got he's got lots of cavalry cards in here. Raider, Lafiti Knight. It's not shock riders. You know what I meant. Like he's got, he had lots of raiders throughout the game. From my from my recollection, he's actually playing right now in the Sun Bros Discord as we're recording this, streaming his house game. Oh yeah, yeah. This this like guy... and subscribe to his Discord stream. We actually played this game like really recently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, switching over to the opponent's side of the map, uh, the enemy British player here. Uh, let's see here. He's got. He's aging up. He's he's doing a full like manor houses thing. Looks like he's got like thirteen on food. He's getting to market and building houses. Deck wise, uh, he's got an even mix. He, he, he's got no unit shipments in each two. It's all upgrades. He was prepared for the long haul. Look at this. Look at this. Only unit shipment is two falconets. That is. That is an upgrade centric deck right there. <laughs> Interest, interesting. He's got GMT and a deck in, in a in a in a game or a map that doesn't really favor sending it. But okay. Well, this map is. I actually think this map is pretty good for for trade route booming. I I was considering it. The only reason I didn't is because it's a bad idea in four v four in particular. Uh, but there are four trade posts in the middle of the map, and then one right here and one right here. And they're all connected by the same trade line, which means that you're probably not going to get this one, but you can get five out of six, and that's that's really good. Yeah, I mean, the middle ones are always going to be contested, though, especially with the scarcity of resources at, in your in your base. I mean, usually, I guess. Yeah. Doesn't appear to be I the case. For today, a trade but... post boom, you would probably want more unit shipments in H2 is the thing. 
In like 2v2 and 1v1, this map is actually pretty scarce on in terms of resources, especially for like coin mines. As a Sweden main, it's it's tough because everything's gold, but there's not a lot of actual mine sites. We're building up uh, a four base in the center of the map here with Wit's pink watering hole. Uh, all right, let's let's keep let's keep this. Oh god, the game is. I it's been. I haven't done a cast of a four v four in so long. It's tanking my computer a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that goes on in a 4v4, too. Like, everybody's kind of doing their uh, thing. And, and recording and... software is pretty intensive, too. Yeah. All right, so France here. France was going all in on natives. I think he did a fast industrial as well. He's, he's already claimed both the European posts. So he's he's doing a, he's doing a, a, some, some crazy stuff. So this is Pharaoh King. He's probably the best individual player here. And, uh, goddamn, he took us by surprise this game. He's got a water deck, too. At least it says that. Oh, it, it does say that. Interesting. There's no water cards in here. We do have the, uh, we do have the battleship shipment, though, in H4. Which is important to know. Yeah, native, uh, Builderness Warfare is native warrior hit points plus 20%. And then he's got plus 15% combat here, and then plus 10% here as well. Like, he's got all of the native guards in his deck. Native warriors are less expensive. Well, let's hop back over to you, because this is your build. We're, we're going over your kind of build order, so let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's hop back over to you. Alright, so I'm actually pretty far in, in into this build order now. Um, at this point, I've gone capitalism into Dutch immigrants into uh, Philadelphia Convention for the coin trickle. So we have three different sources of coin trickle coming in, and we're sending advanced saloons so that our saloons can provide population, and we can have three of them. Each of those saloons also provides a coin trickle. And I'm also making gunslingers. It's a lot of coin trickles. It is a lot of coin trickles. That's what makes this so good. But now that I have some gunslingers, I'm like, okay, let's go forwards. Maybe we can find some settlers or something like that on a, on a coin mine or a hunt. And uh, so I'm moving up. Oh my god, this is this is not going to get better. <laughs> uh, and I spot this treasure here. I'm like a beast of Gedavon. That's normally not like really accessible, but you know, I got all these army here. And 400 XP is pretty meaty, so. In comes my that's, explorer. That's a huge treasure. 400 XP? Yeah. Well, actually, it's even bigger. It's one coin and 400 XP. <laughs> but the thing is, Beast of Gedavon has 35 attack at one speed and 480 HP. It's normally not accessible, even by age 3 explorers. But and in this you case, can't even crack shot him. But it doesn't matter shot. because he just got one shot. Because all of my gunslingers have the charged action on them. <laughs> so... Yeah, that was brutal. But yeah, this is this video is largely an appreciation to um, a, an appreciation and kind of an eye-opening video as to why Owl Hoots are the best USA skirmisher and probably one of the best endgame skirmishers in the game, which I think is going what to is surprise it? a lot of people. Eight minutes? How many of those do you have? I don't okay, have any right now, but I have nine gunslingers and twelve nine. men. Okay, that's a decent force. Yeah. The Gunslingers Never have 30 base attack in age 2, which is pretty cool. They're a lot higher. It's a lot higher attack than a, than a Musketeer, and then they have that charge action for that little extra boost, too. So why Springfield Armory? Uh, Springfield Armory, that's just, to, you know, it's just to get unit upgrades. You know, earlier you can get them, the better. Sure, but D2 like, is, is, there, is there not a better card you could be sending right now? Well, you want to send Springfield Armory pretty early as USA because once you send it, you, all of your upgrades come in extremely slowly. And if you if you get caught in the late game without having sent it earlier, um, you are going to be f for a long time without your arsenal upgrades. And some of them are actually really good, like the the fifteen percent gunpowder attack and HP and ten percent HP, I think, uh, and then counter infantry rifling and movement speed are just insanely good. Movement speed is one of the most important things in this game. If not the most important thing. Indeed. 
Yeah, we did catch out quite a few villagers here, which was nice. And, and I'm just free racks. engaging a shootout against these Ashigaru Musketeers. I have much higher attack than them. They have a little bit higher HP than me. But we're a pretty even fight for the Ashigaru, actually. Oh my god, it's so slow! <laughs> Gunslingers have 4.5 base speed, which is pretty cool, too. That just smokes. In comes the Strelit Horde, though. And uh, we kind of realized a... that between the Strelits and the Longbows, like, there was probably too many skirmishers here for us to, uh... And now we, we got a regular Zen sentries coming out with the Ashigar, and we're like, all right, time to get out, you know? So the, the, the one time I will advocate for having, like, the team outlines is in 4v4s. Yeah, I can see that. Because, like, I'm trying to look at this and be like, oh, who's, you know, who's... <laughs> which color is on my team? <laughs> it doesn't help that Aztec's primary color is fucking gray. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, like, trying to figure out which color, like, which color is on your team in, like, I have no idea. So that's that's where having, like, the team color outlines would be helpful. Right, but so other than that, like, I just think it makes it look, look the, make the game look a little bit too cartoony. But that's besides the point. Yeah. We're also getting Virginia General Assembly, which we've already gotten in. Uh, I've just kind of forgotten about it, but you know, we'll, we'll get that out soon. But let's talk about the Owl Hoot here for a second, because something I didn't realize. And oh my god, Pharaoh's age four. Yeah, he's industrial age, and we panicked for a little bit here. Uh, but something I didn't realize about the Owl Hoot until really recently, they have two attack speed. Uh, their base attack is actually 20, not 22, but I think one of my Springfield Armory buffs has come in. Um, yeah, most of my Springfield... Ar uh, uh, some of my Springfield Armory buffs have come in by now, so... Uh, they have extra attack, but that's 30 attack in the second age at 3 speed equivalent, which is double that of an age 2 skirmisher like Dutch, for example. Um, so these guys actually have the same overall attack as the Gunslingers, but they have range resistance and multipliers against heavy infantry, which is ludicrous, you know? And uh, it's because of that, that they, get, they can scale so hard into the late game, which is what we're going to kind of do. So our thought was um, against Pharaoh, because he's at 65k score right now. Oh, he sent a card. Yes. Because we were like, why is Pharaoh's score so high? I'm like, it's probably because he sent Blood Brothers. It's exactly what he did. This gives you the Imperial, this gives you the guard upgrade for every native on every map, even the ones that aren't on your map. So, it boosts so it's, score it's, by like it's literally just every native ever in yes. the entire game. His his real score is probably about 20k right now. Um, and so we're just like, let's he's he's got blood brothers. He's going natives, the industrial age. We need to try to uh, burn down this TP as soon as we can. So that's what we risk going in here for. Oh, no, here come the Griots. And There's a few of them. There's not too many, but we realize we just need to fucking run at this point. There's too many units here. Well, you have the Griots, so your your team. Yeah, let's, I mean, I don't think we looked at Japan's deck. Pretty standard stuff. Lots of upgrades. Good to know. <laughs> uh no uh mm, he's got the dojos. I don't like it he's got the dojos. i don't like that deck at all at all i oh think that's God. a bad deck okay oh my it's so slow <laughs> uh dropping the graphic settings might actually help that uh russia is going with like strelit hoarding he's he's, he's trying to get lots of strelit hordes and he's, he's got, got Sovnia. Sovnia, which does come into play in this game. He's got Strelit Combat. Just all the stuff that you would you would expect. Strelits and Ruskets. What Ooh. in the fuck? More Griots. The Griots went into the Russian base alone? I'm so confused. They were feeling themselves. They looked in the mirror and said, I am strong. I am bold. I am important. And they ran straight into that base. <laughs> with all the confidence in the world. And so then we, got slaughtered. 
We've hit age three at this point now. Um, I just researched the Wild West upgrade, which get, makes all of our units shadow tech their upgrades in every age. Is that the um, the USA equivalent of folk heroes? Of what now? Folk heroes. Yes, it That's, is. Okay. It's it's the USA equivalent for folk heroes. Uh, and then we've also sent Kentucky coal fields so that we can get lots of coal mines in our base. Uh, these collect these have two thousand coin and they collect twice as fast as a normal mine. And yeah, we're just going super heavy on the owl hoots here because owl hoots have twenty six damage at two speed, just hilarious. In After H3. all their upgrades, yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's go back in. Hello, gentles and ladies. We're back. I restarted my computer. Everything is running much much smoother now. You need to throw up a stream though. Oh, oh. never mind. It's up. Yeah. I got it. Uh, everything is running much much smoother now. Uh, we gone back in time for a little bit because uh, I forgot to get this fight over here over this forward base that we spotted. Um, but yes, the the owl hoot has some ridiculous statage right now. It's on an equivalent of 39 attack at 3 speed, which is higher than carded Imperial Skirmishers from France. Which is pretty funny. That's uh, impressive. Yes. The carded Imperial... The max level, like, Im French Skirmishers have 36 attack. With all of their upgrades and cards. Yeah, this shootout starts to happen over here. At the same time, we've discovered this forward base here. The Aztecs are driving our friendly Royal Guard Musketeer and Northern Musketeer infantry and guy uh, back while the Albuts really dish out the damage here. We do have to be careful because these are guard units. Guard units are nasty. If this had been much else than an owl hoot, you know, a massive owl hoot, you know, it would have been worse. He's probably like, what the hell? Why am I not winning? I'm an age up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have, like, blood brother mass natives guards. Like, like, what the hell? How many how many upgrades does France have? We're sending units down here to help deal with this now. I want to check France, though. Okay, he sent this combat- he, he sent some of his- uh, quite a few of his native combat cards. At least one of them. He sent the 15%, but not the 10%. This was kind of a dumb forward base location for- for- for-, for yeah, That's like in your main base, yeah. where all your units are. <laughs> See, at this point, we sent Rolling Artillery as well as um, Kentucky Coal Fields. And we're at 200 and 200 pop with 30 settlers. This is just the casual USA Outlaw experience. Look at this army What's that I've got. 25 yes. Alhoots, 12 Minutemen, 14 1600 coin per second, by the way. Yes. And look, this is because we sent Kentucky Hunters, which uh, delivers one Chartreuse for each shipment, and then also adds three to the Alhoots range. So our Alhoots actually have 21 range now. Oh my god. Yes. Paired with the, the 22 of Chartreuse. Yeah, look at these. Look at these stack comparisons. The Chartreuse is a good age three, like Skirmisher, right? He's got 20 attack. Uh, at 3 speed, though, and Run. these guys have 27 at 2, and that's fucking nuts. What you need? Yeah, that's, yes. uh, that's ridiculous. 115 Run. HP as well is, 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 like, not great. It's like Castor levels. 40, yeah. That's 40 attack equivalent. Yes, yes need? it is. <laughs> oh, right, here's a bunch of mortars, because our Portugal is also now in age 4. Uh, has the battleship arrived yet? I don't. I don't think he sent the battleship. I. One of the things you're terrified of. One of the things you're terrified of with Pharaoh King is that he's gonna send the battleship. He's orange. Okay. No, I don't see a battleship on the field yet. And he's potentially sent it. Yeah, you've already sent this card. He, it's it's somewhere. Here it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's got a battleship on the field. <laughs> Battleships attack speed is nuts. 
<laughs> yeah, it's 0.5. <laughs> it's the same as coffee little guns. Yes, the pipe men got in touch with these mortars, and we're like, oh no! Mortars are surprisingly tanky, though. Well, I, I think it's also just that pipe men suck. But, you know. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to counter mortars with pike men, <laughs> but uh, to each their own. I, mean, I don't think that was the plan. I don't think he was expecting those mortars to be there. He just, <laughs> he just took advantage of the opportunity that he was given, you know. I don't think the Shogun it's long for this world. No. Alright, let's go back to, uh, to my thing here. Uh, have I sent Oklahoma Black Mesa? Yes! So now I have three coal fields in my base, and I have a whole bunch of ga uh, gunslingers working on them. As well as this batch of gunslingers here that I made for this gold mine, uh, that they are not working on yet. They will soon, though. So, um... Coal mines gather at double speed, so each of these gunslingers are collecting at 1.2 gold per second. Yes. And these settlers are able to get the, the market upgrades, so they're all getting at 1.38 coin per second. And this this yes. gold mine here is out as well. So this is what I was saying when I was saying that it's impressive that Portugal was able to have almost as much coin as me by the end of this game, just because yeah, he's doing the Portugal water boom thing. He's got to contend with that battleship, though. He kind of didn't for a majority of the game, from my understanding. He just ignored it and made more ships than he could kill. <laughs> now that is impressive. But yeah, these, uh, the Strelit and Ruskin Horde killed my Gatling guns. How dare they? Uncalled for. Unfortunately, my skirmishers are all stuck shooting that Curis- that one- this one fucking Curis here. Stop me from, like, it stop me from doing so much more damage to this- to this Russian war than I could've. You know. But, oh, I hit the industrial age at some- yeah, okay, I- I casually bought my way up to age four. Classic. And I- Nobody on- nobody on food still has 2,000. <laughs> I, I'm putting more people on Hello. food right now. These people are going up here to this, this hunt, these hunts over here. But uh, once you get what to you age mean? four, USA gets access to uh, a tech that, that costs 400 gold and 400 wood. Yes. Uh, I'm also finally getting outpost wagons for the for this front area for a shipping point. But um, it basically functions as a royal guard tech. It gives you your extra 10% in addition to the shadow teching. But look, now we're at 38 damage at two speed. My god. <laughs> 2,000 coin per second, and you're just in we, their base. We've also not sent the Long Rifles, the, the Continental Rangers card. Uh, we've sent Dantal, though, which means these guys are now two population, which makes them suddenly incredibly population efficient. Two pop, 110 coin apiece? Yes. My jeez. They went. They just went from four pop to two pop, and now they are. Apple hit the appreciation post. Yeah, th that's exactly what this thing is. Is I'm just, I basically just monocomped owl hoots at this point. I thought nothing else is worth making. We're just shipping owl hoots. We're just making owl hoots. I'm ready. And I thought I'd start with this fucking trading post that we didn't get before. Oh, uh, we also- I also got a team ship into some Sonata Riders, so that functions as a little bit of anti-cavalry. So, uh, thank you, um, I think- I- I think, uh, Hausa, Mr. Iwo, for- for these, uh, Zenata Riders. By the way, uh, the Alku has this- has more siege than a normal Escatier, their base siege is 24. Despite being a skirmisher type. That's pretty good. Yeah! So right now they're at 42 siege. And they got this buckshot attack, which is, I think I mentioned it before, but yeah, two area of effect, no negative multipliers. Yes. This is great. Now look at this, this absolute core just of army here, of uh, Cossacks, Strelitz, Ashigaru, and Royal Guard Dragoons and Kurisiers just running around and cleaning up our, uh, cleaning up the fight here. We're kind of burning down the trade line, making sure we're securing the middle of the map. I got 15 Alhoots here, plus I'm ready. 
18 here, no. so we're, we're close to 40 owl hoots. And uh, all I need is one saloon on the front lines to keep this production up, just because of the flag. They just yep. train quickly. Nice. Did you ever make the other uh, saloon? I'm ready. Uh, yeah, the, I, I built them back at base. I do this in oh, case okay. somebody tries to attack me while I'm not expecting it. I always build one forwards with the flag and then two back at home. And yeah, that kind of gives me the max kind of possible training outcome. In terms of the two locations. But yeah, suddenly big Russian army starts pushing in here. And we were... Portugal was somewhat concerned about this, and I was like, I'm just gonna bring in these. Nah, I don't worry about it. How many, how many Strelitz are you? I'll wreck here? everything. What's the Strelitz range right now? Terrible. 14. They don't have any way to increase Strelitz range. There's 71 Strelitz here. And they're all gonna die, aren't they? Versus um, the... 43 Alhoots. Just look at all of it. The mushroom cloud of plus sixes. <laughs> Dear lord. I mean, there's also militia men here, too. Plus, you've just got so much range on them. Yeah, we do. And you just have the res to go to age five? Yeah, I just bought my way to age five. Here, we've lost uh, five Alhoots so far in this fight. And how many Strelitz are left? Alright, no, we lost seven. We lost seven! All of, oh all of them. <laughs> all the Strelitz. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Ewo is still putting mortar shots on people. Yeah. Oh, if you could get to those villagers, that would be clutch. Yeah, we're aware of them. I'm just kind of like... Trying to trying to walk my way up, you know. And then I'm like, oh shit, cavalry! How dare they? But you're I, dead too. I'm bringing Ooh. the Zamata riders here. Actually, you're kind of getting a little bit shredded by. Yeah, it. no, the cavalry kind of sucks, but you know, the Zamata riders helped a little bit before they got distracted by the pikemen, and uh, then these guys just took care of the rest, which is fine. You know, you do still need an anti-cap unit. They are better against Cav than other Musk than other skirmishers, but like they're not the greatest in the universe, you know. So there's my H5 against Guard Strelitz. And you shadow tech. So yeah, we're shadow tech even harder. And we shadow tech with New York. Uh, so New York provides a 25% boost to mercenaries and outlaws. So you have 57. Th between that attack, and the shadow one tech. Attack. Yes. So between that and the shadow tech, we actually. Um, it should be a little higher, I think. Plus 19. Oh, wait, no, uh, this is Russia. This is Russia. Russia hit Imperial. I'm still, I'm still industrial. Okay. I'm almost Imperial. But you still have 57 up of one attack. That's about to be a lot higher. Because uh, we aged up with New York, which gives them an additional 20, plus 25%, which when you combine with the 50% uh, oh material upgrade that they get, <laughs> uh, it's closer to sorry. 79, uh, 70, actually. Yeah, 79, sorry, bad, bad enough. 79 attack equivalents at 3 speed on its skirmisher! <laughs> And then there's just mortars and organ guns and everything in the background and falconets. <laughs> Thank you, teams and auto riders, for saving my ass. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it takes these big cavalry pushes, and even then, I could probably trade. Well, uh, how many fa the eight falc their ass oh. will do that too? <laughs> yeah, that, that that would do the trick. But <laughs> the splash damage alone from that. Alvins have the most insane stat ca uh, stat stat ridiculous caps. It's hilarious. Uh, now the thing is, although sixty three siege. Yeah. Now the thing is, although um, <laughs> Alhoots, um, al although at although Alhoots get the twenty five percent from the New York upgrade itself, they don't actually get the twenty five percent from Hamilton's own. So they get less upgrades from New York specifically than mercenaries do. 
Um, but here, here's here's Zwave by comparison. I just ship Zwave. They have forty. They have more range resistance, and they have four hundred and fifty attack. Uh, but they have fifty five attack compared to fifty eight at to fifty three at two speed. Oh, <laughs> that's the punch shot to see the shotgun go off. Well, then. <laughs> that was the shotgun attack. By this point, I've also sent Continental Rangers, so they got their 15% combat card. Hey, and Russia's just kind of out now. Despite being age 5, it's yeah. over for them. Despite being age 5, he cannot make. No amount of Strelitz can really stop this massive 50 outlet Nope. Because they still get outranged. Yeah, they get outranged. And and out, obviously out damaged, but oh, they only have 153 health. They're they're guards, so they're not. Yeah, but still. I, he never gets the imperial upgrade for these things. I don't think. I think I just put too much pressure on him. He probably never had the wood for it. I imagine at this point he's also lost a lot of villagers. Yeah, at this point, he sacrificed another Strelit Lord in exchange for eight of my Owl Hoots, and, you know, now Ten's Wave are here. And the Owl Hoots are out-competing this Wave. Now, I, I do send Hamilton's own eventually uh, in this in this game, so you'll be able to see the maxed out Zwave. It's, it, it's, it's, you know, it's cool, but it's no Owl Hoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> So this is why I said in the tier list that Alhus make the best frontline main army skirmisher for uh, main army core skirmisher for USA, and they are the best Which, skirmisher USA. Meanwhile, has. where is the rest of your opponent's team while you've just been in Russia's base? Oh, they've been fighting off uh, the the eight Falcon at mass and guard cast or mass over here. Okay. So your your teammates special. are your teammates are allowing. Uh, you to just what deal with Russia, Russia while yeah. they deal with everything else. Smart. The battleship's still alive. <laughs> just chilling. Just chilling. I feel like he's probably got bigger things to concern himself with. So now that's Russia and Japan out. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, as soon as Brit's out, we're gonna fast forward here because Pharaoh King tries to extend the game a little bit just by himself. Like, oh, hi, Summers. I'm sure Brits is gonna follow right here, just letting all his bills die. He's got a big, massive longbowman, but no, yeah, he does. He's, he's, he's done. He's trying to go longbows for most of the game, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and his opponent, or his teammate who could have made. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. I'm gonna switch to two speed for the rest of this, for most of it at least. Yeah, it's just burning down the base, and now, now it's a 4v1, you know. There's no stopping this flood anymore. Nope. Goodbye, factories. Wow, those go down so fast. So, for reference, uh, for this, for information on this video, I, I, uh, I think you three shot that factory. I'm pretty sure I two shot it. Um, but for before this video, I um, took a little bit of a. I, I fully upgraded the French skirmisher with as many cards and upgrades as I could because I know those ones are royal guard and considered to be you know, very solid. Um, Endgame level Imperial fully carded French skirmishers are really tanky actually. They have 306 HP compared to the Alcute's 286. Uh, but they have 36 attack at 3 speed, which is less than half of what these guys have. Which ends up making these Alcute's actually extremely population efficient and, you know, also able to deal with cavalry. Which is pretty funny with, with the Buckshot having no negative multipliers. The buckshot attack is fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as the main shot, but it's the area of effect that you want from it, you know? And it's it's the reason why it makes such a good on-mass shooter, because, you know, there's not as much uh, overkill 
when you're shooting with 50 of these guys with the reduced damage area of effects. You know, there really isn't. Nice, yeah, we'll go back to two speed here. At this point, we're just running around looking for him. He revolted into, uh, into USA, France. Then so he's got... <laughs> I love that it's the same flag. Yeah, it's pretty similar. But yeah, at this point, the game's just over. I'm pointing out that he's got an explorer up. I'm ready. And I think he's got some villagers in the corner. All right, yeah, it's on Hamilton's own. So now we can see um, fully decked out Papal Zouave. 59 attack, not as impressive as 80. Yeah. No, definitely not. But they do have 40% range res and 550 HP, which is impressive. Very impressive. And they're faster they're by faster. almost a full half point. Yep. What is your command? What you need? The Apple are kind of considered like one of the premier like New York late game. Ha ha, I have a victory condition. And those aren't those aren't Papal Zouave. Those are just so Zouave, yeah, though. The Zouave, that's what I meant. Like, the Zouave for USA yeah. are like one of their premier late game New York. I have a, I have reached my win condition, and it's getting 25 Zouave in a shipment. And, like, they're not that much better than what I got. They're also three pop a piece instead of two pop. Oh, yeah, that hurts. Yeah. So this is this is why the Alhut is insane. And that's why I wanted to make this video. GG. <laughs> what you need? What is that? Is the that dock. a, uh, a dock that's a rotated. dock? Yeah, it's a rotated dock. Yeah, that looks weird. I don't know if I've ever seen a dock from that angle, an Ottoman <laughs> dock from that angle. Is that Ottoman? Uh, it's Who's it's, dock it's is Hausa. That? It's Hausa. That's Hausa's dock. Yeah, look, it's got the flag. Yeah. I've never seen a Hausa dock, like at all, actually. All right, let's Interesting. Look at now, what's unbelievable here, so I did have the most coin gathered, but what's absolutely crazy is, um, I, so when you look at the score, Farrakh, it Prez had the most score. Yeah, okay, he's Portugal water booming on Finland. It's like, there's nothing nobody can do, anybody can do to outscore him. Uh, second highest score is Pharaoh King, but he sent, uh, about 45k of that score is fake, because he sent Blood Brothers. Correct. And then here's me, so I had the second most. But what was surprising is, after all of my coin tricks, fucking Prez ended up with just 1k less coin than me. And double <gasps> my overall resources. Wow. <laughs> He's got 40k of everything. And then the next closest in terms of coin is like half. <laughs> Look at this. I could not believe that. So yeah, uh, USA Coin Gather. It will will outperform fucking Portugal Water Boom. There you go. In terms of Coin Gather, if you want to go with this route, but you know, look at yeah, he had to go with a full Dock Boom for that, right? And mm -hmm. all I need for my military is coin. Uh, I have forty six villas right now. That's that, it. That's all I got. Yeah. I got a couple of gunslingers mining coin around the map. They they ran out of mine. Um, but yeah, that that's it. And it's it's pretty funny. I have another game that I'm probably gonna post as well, um, in which we I I was literally. Uh, I'll probably save it for that next video, but suffice to say, my base was destroyed, and I had 16 villagers, and I didn't care because I shipped all my coal mines to the forward base and then just got a bunch of gunslingers to mine from it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But yeah, uh, that's today's video. Do you have any any thoughts, Chase? Uh, uh, no. Other than uh, I'm just impressed you had the balls to even play a 4v4, because I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been enjoying a lot of uh, I've been enjoying the game a lot recently, and uh, you know this is, th this build looks is pretty cool. It uses two of the three buffs that we got with Dutch immigrants and and, and Oklahoma Black Mesa, which I do think is actually a really good card now. That's a big deviation from your previous statement in one of your most recent videos. 
<laughs> yes. I've been, I, I have stated that Oklahoma Black Mesa has been a trash card for a long time. And it has been a trash card for a long time. It used to do the exact same effects, but in age four at the cost of 1,000 wood. No, it's actually good. And the devs after, knew it was trash, so they had to buff it three after seven fucking bucks. times. <laughs> they moved it to age three, they halved its wood cost, and then they cut it by another 60%. And now it's good. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, gentles and ladies, and have a great day, and goodbye. <laughs>